Okay, this is the beginning of my crystal oven project. The goal of this project is to heat a crystal used in the transmitter to a very precise temperature or a very constant temperature, a little bit above room temperature. The goal of that is to cause the crystal to resonate at an extremely stable frequency. At the heart of the project is a microcontroller, an ATtiny 44A microcontroller, and the temperature sensor is here. It is a thermistor or a resistor which varies its resistance based on temperature. I am comparing the resistance of this thermistor with the resistance of this surface mount potentiometer. I can change this value to, and in a sense, uh, select the temperature, the goal temperature. If I begin to heat the thermistor just with my finger, you can see the lights start to change here, and that means that it's warmed up. As it slowly cools off, yeah, there you go, you can see it start to go back here. This is a very simple way to measure temperature. Not really even measuring temperature, but more comparing temperature between this thermistor and this surface mount potentiometer. And I'm doing it very simply with the comparator feature of the microcontroller. This way I hope to eliminate as many components as I can. And I'm sure this could be done more accurately or a little bit more elegantly with a selection of uh, transistors and different thermistors and that sort of thing. But I found this to be a very simple and effective way to do this with only two parts. It could be done without the potentiometer by reading the uh, analog to digital converted value of just the thermistor into the microcontroller. We could probably get a stable enough temperature. But I found this is easy enough because you can easily go through and adjust the desired temperature by changing the potentiometer. So there you go. And once again, it's cooling off and it will slowly go back to the original LED. There you go. Uh, later, I'm going to be hooking it up to this device here. It's a block of steel with a MOSFET on it, and the thermistor is hot glued to the block of steel. The MOSFET is going to serve as my heater. And this is a junk MOSFET I just found in an old power supply. I was never going to use it for anything else. But the advantage of it is I can very quickly turn it on or off and by uh, causing it to send its current straight to ground, it's able to generate a lot of heat, which I hope will heat this block to a steady temperature. So we'll see how that goes. And finally, I'm going to insulate the whole thing in this little styrofoam box. It has good thick walls. So if I build it in here, I hope it'll be very temperature stable. So that's it. Okay, this is the finished project. Instead of using the thermistor on the perf board, I actually have the thermistor with that temperature uh, heater and the block of steel in the styrofoam box and I've let it equilibrate for a while. Rather than lighting up this LED indicating that the heater needs to be turned on, the power from that pin goes directly to the uh, gate of the MOSFET to tell it to heat up. So this light, if you look carefully, is flickering. This is the too hot light. When this is on, the MOSFET is off or the heater is off. When this light is off, the heater is turned on. And since it's flickering, it means that it's very quickly being cycled between turning on or turning off. This value is the voltage through the uh, temperature sensing thermistor inside the box. Now I'll open up the box so you can see what's inside. You can see it's pretty standard, the block with the heater element and the uh, sensor in there. Now when I opened it, the light turned off. Remember this was the too hot light? This light turned off because air got in there and it got cooler. That block is really warm to the touch. And if we give it a minute here, I think the light will start to come back on. So the advantage of using this analog to digital converter is that it's already on the microchip. I'm using the same microchip in theory to send the uh, Morse code and also to generate the waveform using the clock out pin. However, a lot of people might think that it's not a good idea to use the comparator for temperature sensing because the comparator is a digital value. It's either on or off. The, in the temperature heater needs to be turned on or off. It's not very um, plastic or very analog like some of the different transistor methods which can turn on the heater a little bit or turn it on a lot. The fact that we can do a lot of comparative measurements very quickly allows us to do things like this flickering, like you see here with the LED. Even though the heater is only on or off for an instant, the averaging effect over time of a flickering on and off 
in theory, should make a nice smooth transition. In other words, if the heater needs to be turned on a little bit, it will just be flickered a little bit more, and that will result, result in a small amount of heating. So I hope that this comparator method will be on par with some of the other transistor methods. And once again, the main advantage is that we only require two parts, the thermistor and this potentiometer, and of course some heating method, which can be any kind of junk transistor you find in your junk box. But there you go, you saw as I closed the lid, the temperature slowly came back up and this light became more solid as a result.